Hi all, welcome back to another episode of Says the Vet. We're going to be talking about thiamine deficiency, aka polio in livestock today. Please jump over to the YouTube channel to subscribe, ask, make your comments there so I can see them. I'll see you in a minute. Hi guys, Says the Vet here. I am Says. Today we're going to be hitting up quite a common condition. It goes by many different confusing names. Its proper name is, wait for it, polioencephalomalacia or cerebrocortical necrosis. But usually you'll hear it just referred to as PEM, polio, or even vitamin B1 or thiamine deficiency. So we're going to go over how to recognize the condition and then how to treat it. But stick around to the end and we're also going to discuss the cause behind it as well, okay? Because you may need to be looking at your management practices. So luckily we tend to see this condition in sporadic cases only as in one in a flock or herd, not generally as outbreaks, thank goodness, because it is quite distressing to see. What you're going to find is an animal, usually young and fast growing, but not always, and essentially the brain starts to shut down. So basically thiamine, vitamin B1, is needed to supply sugars to the brain, and brain needs sugar to function. So in the early stages you will see things like blindness, they may start walking into things or startling easily when you come up behind them. We can see stargazing, which essentially just means staring up at the sky, absolutely frozen still. And this just says, I have a migraine and I'm breathing through it pressing their head against posts or walls, also a sign of, of headache at the front of the brain, and eventually an arched neck with the head cranked all the way backwards. They're gonna be recumbent towards the end stages, go into a coma, seizure, and then they pass away. Now these are pretty general signs of a brain shutting down for any reason, so you will need to have a vet to look for other signs of things like infection, toxicity, or other causes, because you do wanna get onto it quickly. You don't wanna miss those other causes. For example, an infected brain needs aggressive antibiotic treatment immediately if you have any chance at all of saving that animal. So while you're waiting for the vet though, or if you want to give something a go first, you can give some thiamine. The good thing is thiamine deficiency is very quickly responsive to thiamine injections and there is absolutely no harm in giving it if it's the wrong thing. Now thiamine is just the fancy name for vitamin B1 as we've said and you can have this prescribed by your vet usually pretty easily. You're going to need to give it at high doses three to four times throughout the day. Now if your vet is there on farm or if the animal's hospitalized, they're probably gonna kickstart it by giving it straight into the vein, but that's not something you're expected to do. Now, if a B1 deficiency is the correct cause of the brain dysfunction that we're seeing, this animal's gonna start responding, usually within a couple of hours, often as quickly as 30 minutes. If it's really severe, they can take up to a couple of weeks to completely recover, but usually we see a positive improvement really fast. So if you don't get a quick response, then you do need to get the vet. There's gonna be something else going on. And to be fair, and I'll explain this in a bit more detail shortly, even if thiamine deficiency is the cause of the brain malfunction, it may well be secondary to something else that initiated it in the first place, which also needs treatment. So I always recommend getting your vet out. Now in terms of treatment, we've obviously got, got our thiamine injections, right? If it's severe, your vet's also gonna go ahead and try and take down the swelling in the brain. So things like steroids, diuretics perhaps, which is a medication to wash fluid out of the body and take down edema. IV fluid sometimes, it depends on how they see the clinical picture. So if it's severe, it may well need more than just an injection in the field, that's my point here. But like I say, it's never gonna hurt if you wanna go ahead and give some thiamine to start with. The grand thing about B vitamins is generally, if the body doesn't use it, if it doesn't need it, they're just gonna wash out in the urine, like after you've taken a Barocca, right? You all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, if you've had an animal pass away or they've been euthanized, you can have a section of the brain sent away by your vet to a laboratory and they can confirm that that's definitely what the issue was. But other than that, it's really difficult to diagnose definitively while they're alive, other than just response to treatment. Okay, so let's go ahead and get down to why does this happen? Traditionally, it's been a pretty poorly understood disease. Why it just happens in one or two in a group has been a little bit of an enigma, but you have to understand that the animal is not eating vitamin B1. So it's not exactly a deficient diet. That's not what we're looking at. And ruminants so are four chambered um, animals that have four chambers to the stomach. It's the bacteria and the protozoa that live inside the stomach. They are the ones that are eating the grass and producing the thiamine. And then, and then the animal itself uses the thiamine. So really, we can think of it more like a gut flora upset. So we do now have evidence that there are actually two syndromes going on here. Absolutely, we might be looking at a thiamine deficiency, which means that there is not enough vitamin B1 being produced, sure. 
but we also know that we can have a secondary thiamine deficiency, which means there is enough B1 being produced, but for whatever reason, the animal can't absorb it or utilize it properly. So some of those causes are moldy food, diarrhea for a prolonged period of time, certain toxic plants such as bracken fern or Canadian thistles, rumen acidosis, this is a really severe gut upset, so feeding really high levels of corn, maize, sugars, really starchy carbs, that can cause a, a really severe gut upset called rumen acidosis. Water that has a high sulfur content, and you're usually gonna see this in summer because the water's evaporating from the troughs and concentrating the sulfur in there. We can see it with high levels of brassica crops if you start feeding them quickly. They can contain a lot of sulfur in themselves as well, especially if the animal's not getting a lot of fiber. So I used to say that this is not something that's really clear why one or two in a flock or a herd will be affected and we'll just go ahead and treat those, those individuals that are affected and move on. But now I ask questions, is there a feed management issue going on here that we need to correct? And now I always recommend going through and giving everyone in the group a booster of vitamin B1 as well. Please jump over to the YouTube channel, support me by subscribing, thumbs up if you enjoyed it, share if you found it useful, ask your questions and comments there, otherwise I won't be able to see them and I won't be able to reply. Okay guys, we're going to leave it there for now. Remember, if you want to give B1 supplementation a shot, go for it. If there's no response though, within a couple of hours, then definitely get your vet out, okay? You don't want to miss that window for treatment in case there's another cause for the brain malfunction. You don't want to muck around with the nervous system, okay, when you've got disease there. Okay guys, I will see you next time for another episode. Thanks for checking in. See you later.